Hello and welcome. I'm Hunter Newby and this is Allied Fiber TV, AFTV. I'm here with Rod Ulens, who's the CEO of Voxbone. We're at ITW. It's May of uh, 2010, ITW in Washington, D.C. Rod, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Rod and I go way back to uh, my telex days where Voxbone started out as a customer of our, ours at uh, 60 Hudson Street. So it's very special to have you here with me, sitting here um, with Allied Fiber, my new venture, and specifically here on AFTV. So Thank you. This is great. Thanks so much. So we're going to talk briefly about um, fiber, some backhaul uh, as it relates to wireless and Ethernet, and how that impacts your business, uh, Voxbone, which is mm -hmm. obviously voice over IP, uh, you know, SIP related, but more so endpoint resolution, DIDs and whatnot. Uh, so from your perspective, we'll cover these questions and see how they yeah. sort of fall. Uh, so in, to you, what's the relationship between dark fiber and backhaul in general? So to us specifically, not much because as you know, we're more on the application uh, layer and so on. But um, I, th I think to us, it's um, it's uh, the essential essential part of uh, building, of course, the the, um, the infrastructure for, of course, having more services on top of that. For us, um, we we see communication uh, as an evolution from the PSTN world to the uh, IP world, um, and for that evolution, uh, of course, um, fine. And then and then so getting rid of the PSTN gives. Um, uh, the possibility of adding video services and these kind of services on top of um, communication that we that we offer, and so of course for that uh, you need an infrastructure that can support all this growth, um, and so initiatives like uh, Allied Fiber of course are uh, uh, very welcome. But I mean for us it's um, it's it's far away on the food chain I would say. Uh -huh. um, so we buy from carriers that themselves buy. Uh, fiber and, and backhaul using dark fiber, right. um, but we are a little bit uh, far away on, on that side. Okay, uh, but there's a relationship clearly. Uh, clearly, just of course, because but yeah. it's not just uh, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it's two steps away from us, two, two layers away from us. Right. But, uh, yeah. but you know it exists, so that's a start. I know it exists. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how does wireless backhaul impact that relationship and your business specifically? So wireless, not just wireless in terms of transport, but wireless and for your perspective mobile voice wireless how does that interplay with backhaul and fiber as you just described well um as we i think know uh, one of the limitation of the the wireless networks today is the backhaul side mm -hmm. uh, they're very limited in in how much they can backhaul so um today i think um if you want to start offering ip services and mobile voice over ip service and mobile video kind of services uh, you need a backhaul a wireless backhaul that can support all of that again so um uh, right now, our business is more focused on fixed uh, telephony, but we are moving more also towards mobile telephony by offering uh, 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 mobile uh, phone numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so doing that evolution, we expect that, of course, the backhaul can follow and support uh, mobile video and mobile uh, uh, services. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's essential for, uh, for, for the move to mobile video telephony. Great. Um, so what role does Ethernet play? in the present and future as it relates to the voice over IP business? Um, well, I think found the, the, the what we see today is more and more um, Ethernet-based VPNs, so long, long, uh, long range uh, Ethernet-based uh, VPNs. I think even a couple of years ago, we were trying to get uh, um, an Internet connection between our pop in Telix and a pop in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. It wasn't possible or very difficult. Um, we had to have uh, these lines and so with E1 and so on. It's and just, just I mean, nowadays, all the equipment you find is just Ethernet. Everything is Ethernet-based. It's just cheaper, easier to install, to maintain. So, um, yeah, the trend we see from a user of Ethernet uh, long-haul connectivity, I would say, um, is that this is just a trend. Uh, so all VPNs, short-haul or long-haul, all become Ethernet. Um, um, and so that's... Um, it just being it just replacing all the traditional E1 E1 based uh, lease lines uh, mm -hmm. for international connectivity. So it plays a big role in the future. Uh, yeah, and it's going to remain so. That's for sure. Yeah. So yeah. finally, do um, you believe that the United States of America has the physical infrastructure it needs to support all the Ethernet based requirements for transport and backhaul? And if not, what needs to be done? And I guess also we'll put this into perspective of Belgium, in mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, you know, if you look at it geographically speaking, how does the U.S. compare and, you know, is the U.S. okay? Is it sufficient? Does it need to get better? What do you think? 
Um, I think there is clearly uh, not enough competition in terms of uh, U.S. capacity uh, so, so, um, bro for broadband and so on. And even the, the new kinds of broadband plans that are coming out, um, I have the impression they're still inefficient. They don't really offer uh, unbundling on the last mile. I would say while this is something that you have in Europe and uh, France, uh, like we discussed, uh, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's an example country where you have complete unbundling at the last mile. And because of that, you have very aggressive um, um, offerings. I mean, you have offerings from ISP that offer you for $35 per month. You can have uh, video, um, sorry, you can have TV, uh, internet, unlimited telephony. So you, ha so you have a quadruple play um, for $35 per month. And mm -hmm. you have, uh, with that, um, 100 meg broadband, something like that. So I think the US, in terms of broadband, is a little bit lagging. Um, I would say because of the... Um, um, because the networks are not open enough uh, in th on the last mile, probably also because there is not enough competition on the long haul, but there I'm not so sure this is the main reason. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, um, so I think it's, it's clearly not uh, at the top of the list in terms of uh, broadband connectivity, I would say. Right, uh, but hopefully, yeah, uh, it's so gonna come. <laughs> we're trying to it's help, uh, yeah, trying to help facilitate more last mile networks. Yeah. On the other hand, I think the U.S. is quite well positioned for uh, mobile broadband. I think the, there are quite some initiatives, LTE, that, fin, not just LTE, but you see um, quite a few mobile carriers that have already pushed um, or are pushing um, broadband, uh, mobile broadband quite, f quite a lot compared to some other countries. So um, I have the impression that the U.S. is well positioned to be uh, ahead uh, for... Um, for all um, mm -hmm. mobile broadband, but of course you need a backhaul that can support that. Right. So I'll have you back on the show in a year. We could do see a checkup <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Yeah. See how successful. Maybe a year and a half so after the first phase is done. Yeah. Well, thanks for answering those questions. Um, now you said okay. you had a couple questions you want to ask me. Yes. So let's, um, try and get, let's try and get <laughs> one or two of those in. Okay. Um, what's the What's the um, Allied fiber so it has been created to to fill what hole what what's missing today um, in the market right that you're filling well actually multiple dimensions at the physical layer which you just touched on the ability to access dark fiber mm -hmm. for lease that for a lease lease so mm -hmm. that you can act you as a network operator can lease your own dark fiber and light it and that's I not the case yet today well or? it's not overly abundant long haul okay. is definitely constrained um, metros certain regions you can find pockets of fiber but by and large, geographically, throughout the United States, mm -hmm. with our particular route design between subsea landing stations to sort of connect those you know, neural points that hold Asia, Europe, and Latin America together through the United States. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, we're investing in, as well as a dual duct architecture, so that Which the is? second duct is the short haul duct. It's meant to be cut everywhere so that physical laterals can be, you know, fiber can be brought in and fusion spliced, because you cannot do that to the long haul duct. Mm -hmm. The fiber in the long haul duct can't be touched but for the regeneration points because of the nature of the optics that travel through it. Okay. So it's really a combination system that allows for the opening up of the last mile components that supports both wireless, which certainly LTE, and, you know, WiMAX. That has to happen. Fiber based transport has to happen for those towers and other communities, mm -hmm. as well as existing rural carriers and cable companies and also data centers that are trying to be developed in areas where there's abundant power and it's inexpensive, but there's no fiber. So if we can provide yeah. access to dark fiber that folks can lease, you can get it on a very competitive basis. And that's the, again, multiple facets of need that we're addressing. Um, you know, subsea, large IXCs, ISPs, content, wireless carriers, rural broadband, data center development, so on. And the root of that really comes in abundant, neutral fiber, with neutral co-location facilities every 60 mm -hmm. miles, sort of like my old business, mm -hmm. but now meet me rooms all along the route, okay. integrated okay. with why the do you towers. Add, uh, why do you add meeting rooms on top of that? Well, the regeneration colo facilities are a necessity as it relates to the long haul fiber, mm -hmm. because you can't go from New York to Chicago without regenerating the light yeah. signal. But we take the concept of a regeneration colo facility and add to it the concept of a multi-tenant neutral interconnection okay. environment, like a meet me room that allows for the local carriers and network operators, whomever they may be, to physically locate equipment there. And they have the choice. They can either lease fibers from us to get to the major cities, or they can just buy transport, Ethernet or wavelength transport from there. 
uh -huh. on the carriers that are coming through. So it opens up basically a wholesale market, which reduces the cost per bit and improves quality of service and choice, um, which ultimately drives the underlying infrastructure, which drives the economy, which drives healthcare, which drives education, which drives mobility, which also yeah. helps all those things as well. Okay, another question is, um, the, so you're mainly focusing on creating, uh, on connecting the, the central areas, or are you also, um, uh, how, how far does your capillarity go? How far, how deep you go into the little uh, towns? No, you, you're just staying on the major uh, we, yeah. big cities? That's I understand what you're your doing, question. Or? We stick to the main route, the main okay. railroad right of way. But because of that second duct, every handhole, which is essentially a, a fiber junction box which gets uh -huh. buried, we are in the rural area. We are in the community because every place that we physically position one of those, it becomes an access point. Uh -huh. So it's not just a fiber cable that goes through everything between the major cities. It's the second duct that okay. allows for access, like little train stops yeah. instead of just the so major people cities. people can connect their own... Fiber exactly. to your places? Or? Yes, okay. and then we'll lease them the short haul fiber back to the neutral colos okay. and then the long haul fiber to the major cities. Okay, I see. So it makes the system usable. And how much, um, if I was a, um, a carrier, how much um, sort of capacity would I need to use to make it cost effective to use allied fiber compared to uh, using uh, just an, yeah, an Ethernet backhaul from someone or like uh, what kind of, at what kind of capacity levels? Does it become right. interesting to use your, uh, your network? Well, it's a good question. So it depends on a lot of different variables. First and foremost, if it's just bulk transport and at the rates that people are paying today for you know, major city pair 10 gig wave transport, the prices are low. Um, but if it's a short route for financial trading, then uh -huh. the prices are very high. Uh -huh. So New York to Chicago is either $4,000 a month or $70,000. For 10 gig or for what? Yeah, for 10 gig. It's either 4,000 4, uh -huh. or 70,000. Uh -huh. And 70,000 is the shortest route. That's just one anomaly. What this really boils down to, bottom uh -huh. line, is that the rural places and the wireless backhaul currently has no fiber. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter what you think you're getting from a T1 because you need Ethernet and you can't get it. Uh -huh. So this fiber infrastructure, for folks that are already in IRUs that need new IRUs, they, they want it. They want to own their own fiber. They've had fiber for 10 years. Now they want to continue to have it. So an IRU from Allied Fiber for their core backbone route just makes sense. Uh -huh. It's an extension of what they've already got. But for the Arlex and the cable companies and the wireless carriers, this is largely new infrastructure to them. They know that it exists elsewhere in the country. They don't use it. But they don't have access to it. They don't have access to it. So this uh -huh. provides, in most cases, the first time they've ever had access to it. And, of course, rolling out LTE and WiMAX in the U.S., Everyone talks about fiber to the tower. How are you going to get fiber to the tower? So our route provides for a big, long artery where fiber can be built off of on a lateral basis to intercept those towers. I see. Thank nice. you. Is that thank good? You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Rod, Ulens, thank yeah. you so thank much you. for joining mm -hmm. us on Ally Fiber TV. We'll see you again, yeah. hopefully, uh, next, next year. year at ITW. We'll get an update. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks.